Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Donnie and for today we are going to show you how you can create if statements inside the pivot table. So if you're familiar with if statements, they're used to create logic in your worksheets so that let's say if a certain value is true or false, then you assign a value to it. But this time, we're going to create an if statement but within the pivot table. So to start, let's do this right away. So I have this data over here and in my data, I have here some fields like team name, call type, employee name, some CSET score, transaction sandal, total transaction price. And to start off with this video, let's first review how to create a basic pivot table. So to start, you just have to click any cell within the pivot table. And then once you click this any cell, you then have to go to insert. And then under insert, you then go to pivot table. Now in the create pivot table pop-up, you just have to decide whether you want a new worksheet or existing worksheet. And maybe while you're here, double check if you have got the correct cells. So by default, Excel should be able to detect the correct range of cells. In this case, for example, it's A1 to G188. As long as you click any cell within the range of cells that you're going to convert to a pivot table, you should be fine. And then new worksheet, then click OK. And now we have our basic pivot table here to be started. So let's say that I'm going to bring in the employee name and drag it on the rows area of my pivot table so that they arrange themselves as rows. And then next is we're going to bring in the total transaction price to see how much transactions did we have for each of these employees. And now we have this basic pivot table that has a column for the rows and one for the um, values now what i want to happen is to create an if statement in such a way that let's say if the total transaction price is more than 1700 then we'll, let's say let's give a bonus of uh 1000 otherwise let's give 50 for example now in this case you are not supposed to do it like some people i see here were in they would create the if statement here on the left side of the or the right side of the pivot table just on the cell beside it the thing with using this method is that if you use an if statement and then create a formula instead of clicking the cell it will give you the get pivot data this is a formula or a function in excel that allows you to extract the result of a pivot table so get pivot data however the problem with this is that it will pick up the values like here it picked up what is the value of uh, A4, which is in text form. So it's just hard-coded right there. Therefore, it this creates some problem. So if I do here greater than, and then let's say uh, greater than 1,700, for example, let's put a value of 1,000, otherwise uh, 0, or sorry, 100, otherwise 50, like what I said a while ago, and you will get an answer. But when you double click this in the fill handle, you will see that everything is 100 because the hard coded value of Anderson Tison is being carried over to the rest of the uh, cells. So, what you can do is you can actually remove this and just change it to this cell over here. And by the way, if you're watching this video and you see that there's something wrong, yes, I'm actually intentionally doing wrong things just to prove a point that this is the incorrect way. Okay? So, I'm going to double click this and you should see that I now have this value over here. Now the problem with this is that if I do some changes in my pivot table, for example, I'm going to bring in the call type and put it also as rows, you will get errors because it doesn't pick up the change in the pivot table. So this is terribly wrong because this is the incorrect way. So I'm going to remove this and I'm now going to show you how to properly create formulas within pivot table, specifically an if statement. So for this, I'm going to click any cell within the range of cells. And then once I click that, I will go to pivot table analyze. Take note that the pivot table analyze will not show up if you are selected somewhere else in your worksheet other than the pivot table cell. Now, once you see the pivot table analyze, the next part is you have to go to fields, items, and sets and choose calculated field. The name of this option or uh, tool already tells you what's going to happen. It's going to be a field that is a result of a calculation. So do not confuse it with calculated item because this is something else. We will do this in another video. 
For now, I will go with calculated field. Now we have the insert calculated field pop up and we have to now identify a name for this new field that we're going to bring in to our pivot table. So like what I said, we're going to name this one bonus. So any name will do as long as it's not an, uh, an existing name in a pivot table field, spaces are allowed. And now you have in the next field formula. So for the formula, you will have a default here that says equals zero. Of course, we have to remove the zero because that's not part of our formula. But we can keep the equal sign because every formula requires an equal sign just like what we're going to do here. And then we start with our if statement. So equal if, and then open parentheses, and then we're going to create the logical test. Now, you may be tempted to type the logical test like total transaction price, but please veer away from doing this. There's a very high chance that you will commit a mistake. And based on my experience of using Excel for several years, I've experienced that in some cases, like a very small instance, uh, it's possible that you typed it the, re the correct way, everything is correct, but pivot table or Excel doesn't really pick it up. So might as well just avoid typing directly on this field and instead utilize the field choices here. So I'm going to go for total transaction price and then click insert field. Now that I've inserted the field, I will then continue with my logical test. And that is if it is greater than 1,000, let's say 800, comma, and then I'm going to bring in my true, which is 100. So I just completed here the if, open parentheses, my logical test, which is total transaction price of greater than 1,800. And if that is true, then I will put here 100. Otherwise, if it is not true, then we put 50, for example. Now close parentheses and then click OK. So now we have this new column or new field in our pivot table that shows us the value okay, of the bonus depending on the value of the total transaction price. So we see here that almost everyone or any everything is $50 except for the two instances wherein the employee got more than 1800 Now take note that if you use an if statement in Excel, in pivot table specifically, it doesn't give us the correct grand total. It will always give you like 100 And that is because even the grand total is undergoing the same if formula. So we got 100 here because the grand total of 28,553 is also more than 1,800. Therefore, for the grand total, the answer is also true. Therefore, showing here 100. So there's really no way to do, like remove this. You can't even delete it like what I just did. The only way to get out of this is to just change the format of that cell to reflect the same color as the background. I know it sounds like cheating, but there's really no other way at the moment. Correct me if I'm wrong, comment down in the comment section. Now, if you remember, I actually mentioned that the value sh that should be greater than $100 should be $1,700. So I just made the mistake. Actually, 